to all you people all over the world, wherever you are. I know it's a tough one. I'm an old dude. I've been around for years. I live with optimism. But to all you guys, all you youngsters who feel thwarted and put down and hopeless, believe me one thing. I've read someone, I can't remember if it was in the Old Testament or I think it was a shaman, maybe Carlos Castaneda, but the shaman said there was a drought. Cattle were dying, people were dying in the desert. And the shaman said, build the ditches, dig the ditches for the rain. And they said, there is no rain. Dig the ditches and the rain will come. Now you non-believers may say, oh, that's nonsense. Well, believe what you want. That's the rational mind. I don't think the rational mind is working too well at the moment. It's the irrational mind, the subconscious. All my life, when I was a little boy, I dreamed of where I am now. I may have had a vision I don't know. Didn't have much hope, but everything happened for me. And now I believe that we can condense time. We can pull it to ourselves. It's not about the future. Oh, I'm going to do something next year. It doesn't exist. Tomorrow doesn't exist. The next hour does not exist. It's all potential. But what we can do is drag the time into the present. Now. Into the solar plexus of our soul. Build the ditches. Whatever you want to do. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Even if you don't believe. Play the game of belief. Act as if you believe. That is power. That is sheer power. And it will happen. Believe you me. From an old fool like me. It's worked in my life. It will work in yours. So never give up. Believe, believe, believe. I don't care if you're atheist or agnostic or anything. Believe, believe, believe. As I have. Oye, y bueno, ¿qué piensas de estas palabras del señor Anthony Hopkins? Este clip de este gran actor me impactó de verdad cuando lo vi. Y no pude evitar relacionarlo con Neville, sobre todo cuando dice con gran energía, share power o poder puro. Pero además de estas palabras que a mi parecer se refieren a nuestro gran poder interior, el poder de creer, hay varias ideas que coinciden totalmente con la enseñanza de Neville. Por ejemplo, esto que nos dice sobre la mente racional y la mente irracional y el subconsciente, y cómo desde niño él soñaba con estar donde ahora se encuentra. Y sobre todo, esta idea de condensar el tiempo, de traer tu objetivo al tiempo presente, no verlo en el futuro, ni el año que entra o la semana que entra, sino sentirlo ahora mismo, en el momento presente, y nos invita a creer. Entonces, hay tantos actores y personas famosas que sin mencionar a Neville o a algún otro profesor o maestra del nuevo pensamiento, que si te fijas, aplican todos estos principios e ideas que venimos estudiando y que si sirven para ellos, también es seguro que sirven para ti. Así que espero que estas palabras de este gran actor como lo es Anthony Hopkins sean motivadoras para ti. Y además te dejo un breve clip con Neville donde nos habla prácticamente de lo mismo que nos dice Anthony Hopkins. Claro, al mágico estilo de Neville y con su potente voz. Así que practícalo, ponlo a prueba y disfrútalo. But why have a purpose? Do I have the power? I tell everyone, yes. You could imagine the end, can't you? Can you imagine what it would be like if it were true? Can you feel what it would be like if it were true? Well, then that's the power. Now, can you be persistent in it? Can you remain faithful to that end? I tell you what you do. Now, I don't care what the objective is. You have the power to achieve it. If you know this power is the power of Christ. But all things are possible to hear. He personified in Scripture. Then I'll go back and see how they're first personified. You read it in the 8th chapter of the book of Proverbs. The 22nd verse through to the end. The 36th verse. And these are the words. God possess me. In the beginning of his way, the very first of his acts of old. One 
translation has it, he created me, but that's not a good translation. I can inside create my capacity to think. I can develop it. But it was with me in the beginning. I can say that I created my capacity to imagine. It was with me. I may not imagine correctly, but it was with me. So, God possessed me in the beginning of His way, the very first of His acts of all, before He brought forth the universe, before He laid out the foundations of the earth, I was beside Him like a little child. I was daily His delight, rejoicing before Him always, delighting in His inhabited world. Now, my sons, listen to me. He who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who misses me injures himself. All who hate me love death. You read these words in the Eighth of Proverbs. Penny is personalized as a little child, God's companion in the creation of the world. When you read it, it doesn't make sense, but I tell you my own personal experience. Having practiced the art of repentance, but having experienced the birth from above, with the little child, I know exactly what the prophet meant when he was inspired to write those words. One day you will encounter this creative power in you, personified as a little child. The whole vast world has completely misunderstood it and think it's a little child wrapped in swaddling clothes that was found by the shepherds 2,000 years ago. That's a sign of the birth in man of the creative power of God. So God is actually bringing forth His creative power in man. And when it's brought to birth in man, <coughs> me, so that man actually becomes part of the creative power of the universe, the sign of his birth, the sign of his awareness of it, is that of a little child. So here, I was back, I was beside him like a little child, when he brought forth the universe. So in every one, in bringing me forth a part of the created power of the universe, came the sign that my arriving at that point is symbolized in that of a little child. When I find the child, I have come back. Now I have life in myself. I am no longer an animated body, I am a life-giving spirit. If I miss it, I injure myself. All who hate me love death. Now this world is the world of death. So you tell the story to the world, and the majority would rather have the building across the street, or this building. Something to them that is secure. Than to know, pardon me, of a power. Take the building away, destroy the building, but leave me the power to recreate it. Don't take from me the creative power, but take all the things I create. But the world would rather have the things created than the power to create. And so those who hate me, they love death. The result is the whole vast world that decays. For everything that is built today gradually fades. It comes into the world, it waxes, it wanes, and it vanishes. But leave me the power to bring anything into this world and take from me, if you will, anything that I bring into the world. But don't take from me the creative power that I may actually create anything in this world. Now, what does he mean by repentance? It means this. It tests the individual's ability to enter into and partake of the nature of the opposite. I see someone and they are, well, they're behind the eight ball for next year. They have a clear rate, get to buy clothes, feed themselves, or maybe they have obligations to society. Others to feed, others to clothe. They may be a father or mother. But I meet them and they are not employed. Now it tests my ability to put them into the state where they are gainfully employed. I bring them before my mind's eye and I represent them to myself as gainfully employed. And to the degree that I am self-persuaded of the reality of what I am seeing, and hearing, and doing, to that degree they become exactly what I am doing, all in my imagination. For if tomorrow, or in the immediate present, they actually conform outwardly to what I am doing inwardly, I have found the creative power. I tried again with another one. 
I try it with another one. But I keep on trying it. And it works. And then I tell it. I ask everyone who listened to me, I believe it, to try it. See if you can exercise that same power in you. It's not a different power. There's only one Christ. There are a number of Christ right around the earth. Only one Christ. And that Christ is your own wonderful human imagination. So if I exercise my imagination and it proves itself in performance, and then you exercise your imagination and it proves itself in performance, it's the same imagination. The individualized, as never individualized to you, regardless of your name, then you share it with another. And you tell it to others. But if I can tell it to the point where they are persuaded to try it, I mean, trying it, it proves itself in the testing, or we have found it. So when the, you read in Scripture, I have found it, found it. I have found the one of whom Moses in the law and the prophets were. Jesus of Nazareth. Well, the word Jesus simply means what Jehovah means. It means salvation. It means to save. If I save someone from poverty by putting him into a state of affluence, well, then that's Jesus. I'm exercising the same power. If someone is unwell, and I represent him to myself as being the embodiment of health, then he conforms to it. And that's Jesus. He saved him from what? From being unwell. What if I try it and try it and try it, and it proves itself? What does it matter what others think? What does it matter what anyone thinks about what I am talking about? I only know that it proves itself. It works. But if it works, well, then try it. So this is the power of which I speak. Not some peculiar looking on the outside. You don't buy it. It's innate. You exercise it. So you're taught to repeat. It's the beginning of the exercise of the power. And when you reach a certain degree of intensity, that power is born. And is only God. Nothing but God. Man is all imagination, and God is man. And exists in us, and we in him. The creative power of God is man's imagination. That is actually Jesus Christ himself. There is no other Jesus Christ.